Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Next, our podcast and blog series about startups and innovation. My name is Giovanni Vacari. I am head of product here at Startup Bootcamp. And today, we will be interviewing our partner, Smart House, represented by their founder and chief Smarty, Danielle Gerges. Danielle, thank you for coming. And Smart House is an award-winning creative impact studio based in Amsterdam. They help impact-driven brands tell their story, create impact, grow their following, and increase their brand presence. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Danielle, as an introduction, um, can you first tell us a little bit more about how Smart House came to be and what is the mission behind it? Yeah, because we, we've come a long way. <laughs> um, we started as a production company of uh, feature films and documentaries. Uh, my background is in feature film um, and uh, I worked for the biggest Dutch production companies until I decided that I want to make my own films <laughs> about nice. the topics I care about. Um, and then um, in 2015, we started um, advertising on the site. So Smart House Films joined Smart House Commercials. Um, and um, basically, I was super naive. I thought, mm, um, why can we just not make something in between because you know uh taking making a feature film takes years yep. um and i wanted and it's fully subsidy based and i wanted to be independent so um let's make some money with advertising and let's make something in the first place um and um that was super interesting and uh we've learned a lot but um we've also learned what we don't want to do anymore and <laughs> how we not want to work with each other anymore yeah um so in 2020 after covid which sort of gave us all an insight of what what what, what the fuck are we doing actually yeah. promoting brands we don't care about um making films we don't really believe in yeah why don't we take our knowledge pull the plug from the advertising side and and just you know use advertising as a force for good how can we with our team create something that um actually makes which is good for people and planet um and that's when smart house the creative impact studio came into being that's really nice i love what you said about naivete because we had one one guest uh, before they said that the best part about starting is that she had no idea and that enabled them to um, make so many mistakes, but also try new things be just because they just didn't know. So that's good for all the new founders out there. You know, like there's nothing wrong with just starting. No, but it has to be you. I am the type of learning by doing. Yeah. So I feel perfectly comfortable with that. But I also completely appreciate people who research and investigate and then, you know, then just are heading towards a direction uh, that they have um, have thought of in advance. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I learn by doing. Nice. Me too, actually. So that's why maybe it resonates a lot. Um, what does impact branding mean, actually? Good question. Um, we like to see brands as a force for change. Yeah. What does your brand do to contribute? And instead of communicating... Um, how good the product is or how good the taste is of how cheap it is or whatever let's talk about what you do for the planet or its people um, and let, let's use that in a creative way to address your audience um, so it's all about the difference you make as a brand instead of buy me because we're great and it's it's so interesting because Indeed, we, we are talking about also moving the responsibility to companies, because if you leave it up to only the government, it can take so long. But as a company, if you want to become carbon neutral today, there are a set of steps that you can take, right? And you can make that into your brand DNA. Yes. And I think um, communicating that um, is the, the, the consumers of today are, are much more aware of things and are much more intelligent than we tend to think they are. Yeah. And I think if you put your money where your mouth is and you, you actually stand for what you preach and that you're transparent, you can use that um, as your DNA, as you said. And um, how, as a brand, can you um, 
well, first, as a consumer, how can you spot the difference between cause marketing and greenwashing? Mm. Yeah, well, there's the, the um, you have the certifying labels like, um, for example, uh, I don't know, Max Havelaar, uh, Fair Trade, which is actually. But um, fair chain is what you should look for. Fair chain. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, so you have those labels. You can also look at um, carbon footprint labels. Um, I hope brands realize that that's also a way to communicate how how they take a stand. Mm-hmm. B Corp. Uh, B Corps. Yeah, we're we're in the process of becoming a B Corp ourselves. Nice. Um, how as a consumer how can you how can you check um i do think it it um, requests some engagement and and involvement that you really have to do some research but read the labels for example just read what what they say and then think if it makes sense to you and um as a brand uh, if you're a brand owner or if you're a startup founder how can you avoid falling into this greenwashing because sometimes it's very easy, right, to do for doing it. Well, it's also very easy not to do for doing it because I think the long-term solution for a successful brand is to be honest. So this is where it all starts. And if you want to make, yeah, cheap, um, how do you say that? We have a Dutch saying saying a cheap profit. Yeah. Goedkope <laughs> winst. Then, then you might want to end up, but but doesn't really match your DNA if you try to be sustainable and you actually pretend that you are more sustainable than you actually are. That doesn't make sense, right? No. No. Makes sense. Okay, so um, next question would be, what would be a, a differentiator for branding strategies if we're talking about non-profits and for-profits that are in the sustainability realm? Ooh, good question. So the difference between non-profit organizations and profit and and the ones that are into profit and then in terms of marketing yeah um i don't think there is a difference if you if you take the the umbrella of of the impact they make because if you if you go for for the impact communication and solution then then the results is the same do you think there's a difference i think that you you when you place yourself as an impact startup, it is very important for you to show that you're either for profit or not for profit. Because there is this misconception, uh, I think for a lot of investors out there that impact equals not for profit. When that's really? just not true. I mean- Is that what is going around in the investor's mind? <laughs> not, not, the, not the cool and, you know, not 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 all investors let me put it like that but it it is in a few people's minds especially like in in other markets so in the us like if you say impact you're supposed to say for good or something like that you know like wording really matters when it comes to that but as you say if you're focusing on the impact you create and uh, it should it, the messaging should work anyway it should yeah. stick interesting and as a founder you are busy of course building your startup and you're busy, you're busy building your product, building your, your everything. And sometimes we see that founders leave marketing and branding strategy as one of the last things to do. Do you recognize that as of well? Of course, there's, it's always the, the last chain in the food chain, right? But why should it be the first? Um, or one of the first things? One of the first. I think uh, the golden, the holy trinity between product distribution and marketing is something you should always keep in the back of your mind because uh, without a good product that is that you are able to buy somewhere or to or, or service that you can actually purchase, um, you have no need of marketing. <laughs> uh, but without people knowing that your brand is there, uh, you can have a great product, but if nobody knows about it, who's going to buy it? So, um, but yes, you're right. The founders are always, you know, that like uh, trying to keep up uh, everything running at the same time. I think they even have to, you know, our chief, uh, chief toilet paper <laughs> at some point. Um, yeah. So, um, and, and 
I guess the misconception about marketing is, oh, we need a, a website, uh, a Facebook page and an Instagram page and we're there. You know, yeah. uh, marketing is more than that. You need to think about who am I as a brand? How can I make a difference? Who am I as a person as well? Does my does my brand fit me, my personality? Because you're the one, the founder has is the one who's going to make it big, right? Yeah. Um, so if you're just in it for the money, fine, but maybe choose another product and not an impact thing, you know? And do you actually care about what you're, what you're doing? Do you actually care about the sustainability aspect or you're just doing it because, oh, it's very hot right now? Yes, because it is a hot topic and it is the, the biggest growth market, uh, as yeah. I understood. You know, if you're, not into, if you're not into sustainability when starting a new company, you're kind of missing the boat. Um, but it should, it should all match. The, the whole brand DNA should fit your DNA. Um, and that um, um, explains itself in to the positioning, so the but also in the look and feel. You know, yeah. it should be a coherent uh, thing that uh, relates to the service or product. We say start a bootcamp. Fault. Well, we say in startup methodology, uh, fall in love with the problem, not with the solution, because the trends are going to change, and maybe you're going to solve the problem in a totally different way uh, by the start and the end of the program, or by the end of your startup life. But if you're falling in love with the problem that you're solving and it's true to you, right? What you said, like being true to you as a person, right. as in your company, then then you have a, a bit more chance. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's exactly what you're saying. You can also readjust along the way, right? I yeah. mean, um, I think we have come we've we've come from very far to discover uh, who we are as smart house uh, compared to the others, for example. Um, because, yes, we wanted to, to leave the advertising world um, behind us. Um, um, but what? who are we then? Then You know, how can we make a difference? Yeah. Uh, so it took us a while to realize that. And it's just, it's an evolution. And that's fine. You know, it takes time. That's also a thing. It doesn't have to be ready within six months. It takes time. Um, I think time is a good thing, and it's also something we're not really used to anymore. You know, no. it has to be now. <laughs> and, and talking about things that have to be now and, and things that we're not used to, what do you think then are these common challenges that uh, you you see that startups are facing when they when they approach branding? Um, they think um, they know it all. Or they have a cousin who does websites and uh, a friend who does really great iPhone films and videos. Yeah. Um, so it maybe lacks a, um, coherency. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think people tend to forget that the holy trinity that is really, it doesn't work if you only focus on two parts of the trinity. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so maybe um, investing in a in a marketing person is something you're not m wanting to do in the first place, but might pay off. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, and do you see? Um, do you have any top advice for startups that are starting to work on their brand, especially the impact driven ones? Um, Top advice, yes, I think um, be honest and be transparent because um, the, the, the lines between marketing and transparency are fading if you are into the impact uh, sustainability corner um, and just put your money where your mouth is and, and be true mm -hmm. and communicate that. That's really nice. And it's, it's sometimes the opposite of what you, what you read out there, right? Like, uh, oh, you gotta be this, you gotta be that, but like, who are you? Yes. Well, that's my personal opinion. I mean, that's, that's how I believe people can grow because it's like in feature films, right? Um, sometimes the more personal a story is for a, a script writer, the better the film gets because it's more relatable to people. They can identify themselves with the main character because they understand uh, mm -hmm. And in a certain extent, that works for products or services too, or the people behind the product and the services. You can also put yourself as a marketing tool <laughs> into the yeah. spotlights, right? It, it just it depends on what fits you. 
we talked that trends change, right? But if we have to look at right now, what would be the top trends you see in uh, cause marketing or branding industry, like in this world of marketing and branding, brand communication? Well, if I look at the traditional advertising world, um, I think if you have not something that is people or planet related, you... What are you doing? In, yeah, you're not in the game anymore. But it feels super forced. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it feels like, oh shit, we have to ride this wave. So can we agency come up with a with an idea for us to, to join the Black Lives Matter movement? Uh, Why does it matter to you? Exactly. How does it fit to your with your brand? So I feel um, that there's there's a big trend of, of joining this this green wave, but they don't really know how to. So yeah. it feels fake and forced. And the trends within the sustainability community, so to say, I think um, people are more and more open about uh, their production process and. Um, um, they realize that packaging is a, is a big thing in sustainability and they also realize that if they are able to reduce packaging that is a uh, marketing tool um, same for carbon footprint um, I believe that in 2007 already there was a carbon footprint um, 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 uh, how do you call it? Um, certificate? Or? yeah certificate um, which you can use actually. Um, it's like the calories on the packaging, right? So yeah. you can see how much carbon footprint this brand or product uses, and then you can compare. Yeah. Um, so I think to give the consumer more and more tools to compare what they do for people and planet uh, is a trend that is coming up, and I hope that will really set off because that would be amazing. And that's great for the consumer and for the brand because you can actually see and be like, oh, maybe we need to make this more competitive and that will help you develop your product better. So Yes. And it's just a, a constant you know, process of innovation as well. But um, I think people realize that our, their consumers are more intelligent. However, I'm not sure if this is just for the green bubble, you know, because you have a green bubble who is willing to pay a little more for sustainable products. Um, uh, is actually actively looking for sustainable products, but uh, in order to be to really become big, you have to reach outside of the green bubble. But also, if you are a challenger in that in that area, what you will end up doing by, I mean, it's not maybe not your with your wish, but you will be setting the trend as well. Yes, it's it's just it's awareness basically. Those brands create an awareness with people that there is another way. Yeah. And there are so many great examples um, of people and, and or especially brands like, for example, Ben and Jerry's just announced that they are not no longer selling ice cream in um, the occupied Gaza district. Uh, so uh, Israel is furious <laughs> and it's just creating awareness for a political situation they um, are against, you know. So this is what you can do as a brand. Uh, it has nothing to do with your ice cream, but it has no, to do with what yeah. you stand for. So if you if you talk about trends, I, I, I think more and more brands are taking stands in, in different levels of society. Nice. Thank you. Well, um, I have a rapid fire set of questions because we're coming to an end of a, yeah, <laughs> of a very insightful session, I must admit. Um, but I'll let the viewers or the listeners decide that. Um, but the <laughs> rapid fire questions, just reply whatever pops in your mind with that. Yeah. Those. Uh, what are you reading or listening to in case you like audiobooks right now? Sapiens. Yeah. Uh, by... This Israeli writer, you... I don't know. <laughs> I forgot, but yes, Sapiens. I love it. It's super inspiring. Um, and it made me realize that our, our planet lives its own life. And we as humans are just a tiny little micro-organism in the whole cosmos. Um, but still, it's an eye-opener. And I can definitely recommend it. What is the meaning of leadership to you? Um, taking responsibility um, and uh, making a change. Who inspires you the most? Mm, 
Ooh, let me think. Who inspires me the most? Um, I think I am in doubt between because I have some people from my film background that inspire me a lot. I have some people from my documentary background that inspire me. Um, but I also have some people from the sustainability environment. Um, I think our little girl Greta, because she takes responsibility and she moves people and she makes a change. True. Um, what's some of the best business advice you got? <laughs> the best business advice was stop doing uh, commercial projects and focus on one thing. And I ignored it. Oh, <laughs> but later on. No, because uh, so my business, business advice is uh, f follow your own gut. Because if people don't listen to other people <laughs> in that sense, because otherwise I would have never had this creative impact studio. Nice. What's your favorite part of your job? That my job has many hats. Um, you know, I'm still film producer. I'm still documentary producer. I still advise startups how to do their branding and, and impact. Uh, and from all those worlds, I learn and I share. And that's what I love, that I'm actually not one thing. <laughs> nice. What makes you smile? You. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If you could go back in time, what would you tell your 22-year-old self? Ooh, um, when I was 22, I was um, in the process of graduating uh, or writing my thesis, I think, in a university. Um, and I would maybe, yeah, I would have done everything the same way. Just um, maybe listen to my gut feeling a little more because that has given me some detours that in retrospective, if I would have listened to my guts, I wouldn't have gone through the trouble. I think it's going to be the same answer, but advice for other founders. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it's a, it's a bit cliche, right? Uh, you know, listen to your, to your gut feeling because uh, um, I think patience would be my advice. Be patient. If you have a good idea, it'll come. And advice, final question, advice for other female founders. Um, I don't really make a, a difference between male and female. Just do the same as you, as you do. Uh, you, use it and abuse it. That's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Danielle, thank you so much for being here. If you're interested in marketing and branding, for impact-driven brands, don't forget to check Smart House. How could they find you? Smarthouse.amsterdam. Smarthouse.amsterdam. Thank you so much, Danielle. And don't forget, if you liked uh, this podcast, you can always follow us wherever you get your best podcast and also on YouTube. Thank you.